guys, it's Megan. So today I'm going to do some product updates on some fancy high-end makeup that I have purchased over approximately the last year or so. Um, just some things that I wanted to let you guys know whether I think they're worth it or whether I really think they aren't. So I don't know, I just wanted to chat with you guys about some stuff and I don't know, let's just get into it. Okay, so I have really been enjoying the Chanel Perfection Lumiere Foundation, which I wanted for a very long time and I finally got it last summer, I think. And I, it looks super nasty, but I use one pump of this now. I was using two pumps and it was just looking too much like foundation. I really like a base to my skin that's very natural, like pretty much you wouldn't know that I was wearing foundation. That's what I like. So when I use two pumps of this, it just looked too much like I was wearing a lot of makeup. I thought it looked cakey sometimes. It didn't wear like super well, like it didn't wear off nicely. But when I use one pump of this after I moisturize my skin with the CeraVe PM moisturizer in the morning, it is perfect. It gives me exactly the look I want. It gives me a more even skin tone overall, but it doesn't look like makeup. So I really love this. I'm glad that I discovered a way to use it that I really, really love it. And uh, it's pretty pricey. Would I repurchase it? Maybe. I really love my L'Oreal Infallible Foundation and that's obviously a lot less expensive, but I do really, really love this. Okay, I just wanted to mention these because I just love them. The Kevin Aquan Celestial Bronzing Veils. So I have Tropical Days and Tropical Nights. And these are products I pretty much only really use in the summer. So Tropical Days, Tropical Nights. You guys know I love these. I purchased these or I got them as gifts last summer. And I decluttered all my other bronzers. So I only had these. I love the texture of them. I love the finish of them on my skin and they just look super, super, super natural. So this one is Tropical Days and this one is Tropical Nights. So they just look really nice on my skin tone. Even the more orangey one, the Tropical Days, doesn't look orange on my fair skin and Tropical Nights is a much cooler, like rosier tone. So love these so much and I just saw on Sephora's website that Kevin Aquan has a new like cheek palette. It's like an ombre, it's gorgeous, ombre um, highlighter, blush, and bronzer. I want it so bad because comments like reviews were saying that it's the same type of formula as this and my only hesitation is I have this sample of the candlelight um celestial powder and I just don't really get why this is such a big deal like here is a little swatch of it it is a really nice pretty sheen um but it's like nothing amazing to me so um if you have the new it's called like the neo bronzer oh it's gorgeous but I think I might add it to my wish list for my birthday this summer so I love, love, love these powders, highly recommend them, and they definitely work for fair skin. Okay, something that I really, really dislike are the micro beauty blenders, the micro mini whatever, so they are all dirty because I obviously use them, but they're so small, like they're basically the size of like my thumb, and when you wet them, they do expand a little bit, but not so much that it makes like a big difference in the size of it. So I was using it under my eyes like I've seen everyone else do and they're just too small. They don't, I don't know, they just don't blend well enough for me. So I'm gonna wash these up and give them to my sister because she wanted to try them out but I don't think these are worth it at all. I think they're they're super cute and I think that's why a lot of people have purchased them. That's why I wanted them but I don't think that they're very practical or useful. This is one of my favorite highlighters that I have received in the past like year. Um, the Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Duo in number one. Chloe got this for me for Christmas and this highlighter is so stunning. I don't think I have used the bronzer at all. It's very orangey on my skin tone. Um, 
but this highlighter man this highlighter it is so amazing it is very obvious that you're wearing a highlighter so if you don't like that you probably won't like it but it is it's such a unique like pinkish whitish type of color but oh my god I could just stare at it all day I was so surprised that Chloe got this for me because when we were at Sephora a million times together I always looked at this but I didn't want to buy it because I knew I wouldn't use the bronzer but getting it for a gift I definitely feel okay with just using the highlighter but I do want to at least try out the bronzer and see if it can work as like an eyeshadow or something but this for just the highlighter alone I love but I really wish that they would come out with the highlighter separate. I think that it would sell a lot better without this terribly orange bronzer. Let me just swatch it for you just in case you don't have a Sephora. But it's like super super orange. So I don't know. But yeah that is an awesome awesome product. Also for Christmas I got the Cover FX Moonlight Highlighter and this I've shown to you guys before. It looks like a super boring face powder and it's super weird that it looks like this. Like it looks tan. It doesn't look like it would work for my skin tone at all. But when you put it on your skin and I'm hoping that you guys can see this in the camera. It has a silver sheen to it. It's super subtle, like the highlighter itself, but the silver sheen just makes it super unique and just really, really pretty. So I really love this one. I didn't get enough use out of it when I got it at first, but I've been using it a lot more lately and I think that it's one of the most unique highlighters on the market. I love it. A palette that I bought last year is this Tarte Energy Noir palette. I love this palette. It is so, so pretty and really awesome for traveling. And I am not typically a palette person. There's usually some colors that I like or some aspect to the palette that I really like. But overall, I just know I wouldn't really use it. This palette, it, ha it has the most beautiful, beautiful blush. It has this shimmery eyeshadow that you could use for a highlighter. It has all these amazing plummy tone eyeshadows. And these Tarte eyeshadows are crazy amazing. Like, what even? I want to get the Tardist in Bloom palette because I think those colors are really pretty together and they're very different than the colors in this. But if the quality is the same in that palette as it is in this, it's just awesome quality. This blush, I love it. I love the packaging. I love the size of it. Everything about this little palette I absolutely love. I think that it's only $38 and I think it is definitely worth that, especially if you can get it during a sale. I love this and like I said, I'm typically not a palette person. An eyeshadow that I kind of regret buying is this Le Metier de Beauté Corinthian eyeshadow. So if you guys have been watching YouTube for many, many years like me. A few years ago, like probably four or five years ago, maybe even longer, this was the shit. Like everyone talked about this. Everyone like just drooled over this eyeshadow. It was like always sold out. It was super expensive. I think it's like $30. I finally bought it last year in a moment of weakness and I have hardly used it. So this is the swatch of it and next to it is MAC Satin Taupe and you can tell they're a little bit different but honestly they're not different enough to justify the huge price difference between this $30 shadow and MAC Satin Taupe you can buy as a single pan for $6. That's all I have to say. You don't need both. You definitely don't need this and I need to use this more to make the purchase of this worth it, but I am definitely aggravated that even after all these years, I fell into the hype of it and thought that it would be like the most life-changing product ever, and it's not, so that's that. 
If you really like glitter, you should definitely try these Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Eyeliners. I have the one in spandex, which is a super, super awesome blue based, but like super multi glitter eyeliner. And it has a really nice little brush and it's very saturated with the glitter. So it's not like you're just gonna get mostly clear, you will get a lot of the glitter. And I had the one in Half Baked when I was in like 10th grade and I loved it so much. And this past year I wanted this for a party I was going to and I'm so glad that I tried these out again because they are seriously the best glitter eyeliners. If you like glitter but you don't like it getting all over your face, this is definitely the best option because it is in that liquid suspension so it's not just gonna fall all over it's gonna stay as a liquid liner and then dry but not flake off so really love these especially if you need a really super easy glitter you could even put this all over your eyes like they are just awesome okay the chanel blush brush i purchased this this might be like a year and a half ago maybe even two years ago and I was looking for a brush exactly this shape, more um, tapered but dense that kept its shape when I was specifically looking for contour. Um, and the only brush that I could really find that was that exact shape that I really wanted that kept its shape as you use the brush was the Chanel blush brush. And this was the first thing that I ever purchased myself from Chanel. I think this is like 50 or $60 for this brush. It's held up really, really nicely. It kind of has a little bit of like splayed hairs, but it could all be because of me. I don't keep it in like the packaging or whatever. I do really like this brush. It's not the softest by any means. It's definitely not scratchy, but if you compare it to like a Real Techniques or the Louise Young or pretty much any other brush, this is definitely not a super, super soft brush, but it is soft. It's not, it's not scratchy. I love that it keeps its shape, but I really never do like contour or anything anymore. So I use it for blush like it's designed for, and I do like the shape of it. You can apply it really easily. You can do it for highlight. You can pretty much do it for any cheek product, but I would never repurchase this, tell you guys this is necessary. It is definitely not necessary. It's really nice and fancy. I mean, it's not even really that fancy. The only fancy part is that it says Chanel on it. it I don't know. So I do like it, but I definitely don't think it's super worth the price. And I would only suggest getting it if you're looking for a blush brush that's exactly this shape, because that's why I got it. And that's why I think I enjoy it. But if I was getting it, just because it was Chanel, I think I would be disappointed. So definitely like be very cautious when you're purchasing something super expensive because just because it's Chanel doesn't mean that it's gonna be awesome. So it is really good, but I don't think that it's a must, must have by any means. Also, I wanted to mention to you guys the Wayne Goss brushes. So I have these two and crap, I have one more, just a second. So here are the three Wayne Goss brushes that I have. This one is the number eight. This is the number six. And this is the number four. So I have four, six, and eight. And I bought these all individually because, well, they're super expensive. And I wanted to try out these brushes, but I couldn't justify buying a full set for a few hundred dollars. I have so many brushes and I didn't want to do that. So I bought these three separately. I think I bought them for my birthday or for Christmas or something, something for myself that I treated myself with. And I only think one of these is really awesome. I think that the number eight is super, super awesome. It's this super, super tiny, very dense little liner brush. And what's awesome about this is that you can get a really dense amount of product, like a really quite heavy amount of product, and apply it so 
like specifically and so finely like around your lashes or if you're doing like a wing or something you can just get it so rich in pigment and so specific that I think this is definitely the most worthwhile brush from his collection that I have tried. I've only tried these three but um, these are probably the only three that I ever will try so this is actually the cheapest because obviously there's not that many bristles to this, um, but I do really, really recommend this. Now these other two, this number six is very similar to a MAC 217 in the shape. It's like an oval shape for any type of shadow, lid, crease, whatever. These Wayne Goss brushes are extremely soft. They are like the craziest soft things I've ever felt in my life, but I find that sometimes that's a bad thing because when I'm going to pick up eyeshadow, sometimes it doesn't pick up enough or it doesn't pick it up like my other, like my MAC 217, how that's a little more of a thick, um, like more scratchy bristles, but they're not scratchy. They just are compared to this really like super ultra soft bristles. And sometimes I feel like this creates a little bit of a hard pan in my eyeshadows. Like it's so soft that it just packs down the product and it doesn't pick it up. So these are very good brushes. I use them and I enjoy them, but I don't pick them up over other brushes. I always choose my MAC 217 or my Louise Young or my Paula Dorf. I just love those way more than I love these. And I haven't really heard too many people say that. So I did wanna let you guys know that that's how I feel. You know I love brushes and eye products and eyeshadow. So I thought these would be something that I would use every single day and just absolutely love, but I like them, but I definitely don't love them and I wouldn't repurchase them. But I do think that this number eight is a really, really cool brush if you like more like specific eyeliner or very natural looking makeup because you can get it so close to your lashes that it doesn't really look like you're wearing eyeshadow or eyeliner at all. So definitely recommend the eight, but I would definitely pass on the other eyeshadow brushes. And then the last product I wanted to mention are the Burberry Glow eyeshadows. So I have two of them, Nude and Shell, and I got these last summer, I believe. And you guys know I used to love the Burberry shadows, but then they changed the formula. So these are a different range than the typical wet and dry eyeshadows that they have now. These are called the glow shadows. And these are definitely what I would recommend if you're going to purchase Burberry shadows now. So that one is Shell and that one is Nude. And they're just super finely, milled, not finely milled, well they are, but like they're just a very sophisticated sheen for an eyeshadow. I use the Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadow in In the Spotlight, which is very similar to Shell, and it just looked gaudy on my eyelids. It looked like too much makeup, it was just too intense. These I think are super perfect if you want that really pretty sheen or even a metallic look. You can wet these and have them be really metallic, but they don't look overdone or really childish or youthful or anything. They just make your eyes look really, really, really pretty. And I'm super bummed that Burberry decided to change the formula of their normal eyeshadows because I don't think that they're the same at all and I really don't recommend them as they are now. But these glow eyeshadows I think are really, really nice if you like a more like shine eyeshadow to your lid. And I don't know, I just think they're really, really pretty. And I think as I've gotten a little bit older, I have decided that I don't like super, super me metallic type of eyeshadow. I don't know. I like more of this like sheen or like a satin on my eyes. So these are really perfect for me because if I did want to do something really metallic, I could wet these and use them in that way. But typically I just use them dry and they just make a really pretty eye look. So love these a lot. 
So those were all the products that I wanted to update you guys on. I thought this would be kind of a fun video, especially because all these things are pretty expensive and it was just fun to give my opinions on them, especially things that I really don't think are worth it because there's definitely some things I wish I didn't spend my money on in the past. So I hope this was helpful to any of you guys. If you want to let me know your opinions on these products or any more expensive things that you've purchased in the past few months or a year and let us know how you think about them, please let us know. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys soon. Bye!